hello everyone and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft and with the latest instalment in the Foxy Killer build the uh, everlasting Foxy Killer build I'm sure it seems it certainly seems that way to me at the minute um, so we left last time with the decals on here we are still in the, the main part of the kit is still the same I overcoated the decals and the touch up work as you can see by this gloss with some X22 that's two very thin coats there and that is just to seal those filmless decals in to make sure that the next few phases of work don't damage it and for the the main model itself this has been sat to the side drying for some time uh, which is useful I think because I'm going to use uh, enamel weathering products and oils actually for the dirtying and griming of this thing uh, so a good hard substrate is is a good thing because those paints can I won't say they always will but they can have a tendency to eat into substrates a little bit so that's where the main model is and it does look really a little bit like we're on the home stretch doesn't it however this is a jet so we're not I have got all the weapons the pylons the undercarriage and actually even the cockpit you know the um, instrument panels and seats haven't been touched yet so there's actually still an awful lot to do and I'd, I'd go as far as to say we're, we're probably not much more than halfway in but what I want to do for the first part of this video anyway is just look at the stores the loadout that the kits that the models going to have and some of the work I've been doing towards that loadout so initially our electronics pods you have seen these before and I'm going to just bring this in a touch more now this is the sky shadow pod which I modified you can it's not going to focus stupid camera you can buy a resin a brass in one from Edward um, I didn't I modified this one myself added those saddle fairings on the top there with the little strakes thinned and shaped the fins at the back and I relocated this intake as well as the, the front part of it on, on my kit it's just, just come on there we are the front part on my kit was actually short shot and it's not hollow as it comes so that was built up and then hollowed out and then I added this fared in exhaust as well and this has been painted in the RF dark green and cleared ready for hairspray and desert sand Boz pod similarly you may remember was chopped up and messed about to get it straight I've added these little vortex generator fins whatever they are um, using litho plate massively thinned those wings and added the base plates where they're bolted in uh, and then this raised detail is added and I've brush painted that metallic area which should stay in natural metal has been brush painted with Mr Metal Colour stainless and then it's been attacked with a stipple with some silver on it and that's kind of blended in to give it a patchy metally finish it's going to be very weathered so it's not terribly important I also added this sort of web on the back edge and added some details in the back and that area is going to be picked out in aluminium so it will be more visible so that's the pods the next part of the load is the bombs these are brassin they've ended up being brassin bombs I bought res kit paveway 2's brackets UK but these weren't the correct type uh, as I was advised a couple of times and I pretty much realised it myself anyway when I looked at some photos so I went back and got the brass in apparently the same bomb but they are slightly different they don't have the external um, conduit that these have and these are the right ones for the job so that's these and what I had to do straight away there is a, a seeker head which goes on the end here and um, one of these resin probes if you like was snapped off before they ever came out of the box trouble with resin it, it holds detail beautifully but it is very very brittle so for small details like that are, are, are very um, liable to getting damaged and as I say one was broken before I ever touched it so I cut the end off 
flush and straight, drilled back down the bomb, added brass so that that laser seeker head has got something solid to fit onto. Uh, this has then been further modified, here's the modified one, by the addition of some pins. Now this is a commission build, it's going to go to a customer and it's going to live, I believe it's going into a case so it should be okay, but you have to consider a sturdiness to a degree with builds like this because this kind of stuff we all know these are relatively heavy um, and they're very very prone to getting knocked off you know a sharp blast of wind from the vacuum cleaner or knock stuff off models half the time so I like to try and add a little bit of strength where I can so what I did here was I raise a sword this hanging bracket that's moulded on, a razor sword, a chunk from the middle of that, so I put two cuts down that, took the middle piece out, then drilled down into it, video camera's on the go slow today, drilled down into it and put these brass tubes in, now this tube is 0.8mm brass tube from Albion Alloys, that's the bombs. The missiles are a bit easier, these are just straight brass and aim nines, not modified by myself these will go up straight on as they come however the pylons are a different matter so the kit pylon starts off like this this one I've added a brass pin to it because I cut off the mounting bracket with the thought that I was going to modify them and then didn't so I had to make a new one so that is simply two pieces of tube to make into the elongated bracket that I need I'll just show you the slot in the wing under surface there elongated bracket I will pin these as well I think through this section here because again the the interface between the pin and it and its socket is okay but the actual the piece that the weapons go into here these these move about they're not terribly sturdy because it's designed as part of the linkage system to allow the weapons to swivel if you have a swinging wing. I should have just glued them into place or I could have or would have but it's difficult to know exactly what angle to put them at so I didn't. So what I will do is when I'm ready to do it, fit the pylons, align them to my satisfaction, mark everything up and then drill and pin in this aft point here just to give it a bit more rigidity. So that's how the pylon starts out and to that you have to add this kit part which is the launch rail for the sidewinder so the mounting holes were knocked through and drilled out, opened out with a drill for, for these pylons to fit but with the build being what it is I wanted to add some detail to this area even though a missile is going to be fitted I wanted to add a bit of detail and at that point uh, Mike Reeves of Phase Hanger stepped into the mix and actually sent me some, where is it, here we go, resin sidewinder launch rails. You can buy these as part of his F-15 pylon and weapon set but you can also get them separately and you can see there's a great deal of extra stuff to look at on this and they're quite nicely cast. So what I did, I took this kit part carefully sliced off the actual pylon part of it leaving just the rail discard the rail and I fitted the pylon to the pylon <laughs> fitted the launch rail pylon to the main pylon and then fitted the resin launch rail itself to that and then on the outboard side of the pylon I identified the correct position using my reference photos and I've drilled a 0.3 millimeter hole there to later fit and remove the four flight tag into there so the sidewinder sits on here something like this and then obviously the tank goes on as well the outboard pylons are not quite right but uh, for my money trying to bring these into a slightly more accurate state it, it you start to go into the law of diminishing returns if you're not careful and as it stands the work I've been doing on 
these weapons and pylons so far has taken me all weekend and I haven't I haven't finished yet it's a lot a lot it's a lot of time has gone into it um, and I don't think these are bad enough to really warrant putting probably another half a day or a day of work into it I think they're okay but I have again drilled the relevant place to put a remove before before a remove before flight tag later on so the tanks themselves these are the kit big bags uh, the F3 style tanks uh, I have only just fitted the tail fins and they've got Mr Surfacer and a little bit of Tamiya putty in them to get rid of the um, sort of some gaps around where the where they plug in but you'll note that there's another brass pin there not part of the kit I've, I've again measured and sorted this out for myself the two mounting holes here are the kit part the kit mounting holes for the plastic stubs and then I've added a third one in the middle and that again just adds a little bit of sturdiness to that it's not if you just if you just nick the front of this tank now you're not just going to knock it straight off so the whole assembly does begin to look really quite quite nice when you offer everything up together and finally for this segment the under fuselage pylons the three long under fuselage pylons that this thing has <clears throat> and I need them because we're using paveways they fit onto the two outer uh, under fuselage stores rails um, so this this one here is as yet untouched this is what they look like straight from the kit nasty lots of flash and crapness everywhere this is the bottom of it uh, that's what it would look like bearing in mind we're only fitting one paveway to each of these and half of this just remains completely visible and it is pretty shoddy so what I have done I've modified it some so kit etch brass this is not and I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out now to any armorers that are watching any RF personnel that are actually familiar with this stuff this is not 100% accurate and it's not meant to be it's representative only because for one thing I didn't have sufficient references available to make it absolutely accurate for another it's really really difficult to do um, and for another this already took me all weekend so yeah not completely accurate sorry if that offends anybody but this is what we've got so I've dug out some holes, added this etched brass, tidied everything up, put a rebate in the back here. I really wish the camera would stay focused. Put a rebate in this back end where it, the pylon fits over some of the bumps on the bottom of the fuselage. And again, added brass pins and I'll just show that in situ now whenever I was building this for some reason I've drilled out the aft mountings but not the front ones so don't know but again I just I've measured it up and I've drilled a hole and that is even without any adhesive that sits there quite happily this is the aforementioned lump that that has to clear the central pylon again this is relatively relatively accurate because I had I have a reasonable photograph of this again some of the photo etch from the kit and a load more hollowing drilling and making and again pinned to fit into position like so And that's two of the three done and the paveway slots into the holes that I drilled for it there and again sits there quite happily even without glue it will all get glued into position obviously whoopsie daisy as long as you don't poke it it sits in position quite well yes it will all get glued when the time comes We've got some weathering and messing about to do before we fit these, but 
There you go, that's how this is at the minute looking. Full weekend's work and I haven't finished the pylons and it's not ready for paint yet. Which is <laughs> why I say it's tempting to think we're nearly finished but we so aren't. Okay, fast forward uh, some time. We've had a bench move and we've had a few months intervening since I filmed the weapons at the stage they were at before and here they are pretty much finished. They're not absolutely finished. I need to do some uh, removing before flight tags and a few bits of final titivation but they're basically there so these pods essentially have just been treated to some some washes this one will get a bit more work more on that later this one is basically done uh, so all I've done is added a wash and allowed that to linger in a few places to make some staining the tanks were a bit but a bit a good bit of fun because uh I posted a picture on Facebook and my helpful friends pointed out that I'd got the fins on back to front so I had to take all of those off again and then refit them and refill them and resand them and repaint them and add the wash again. Um, from this side you see here we've got the, the brass and sidewinder fitted and I fitted the, the cap over the seeker head uh, as the aircraft will be parked. Uh, that will have a remove before flight and as we mentioned before we've got holes in the pylons for the the tags on the pylons themselves now the tanks i have used wash to get this smutty kind of undersurface thing going on again these will get a little bit more attention but essentially they're pretty much done um, i'm thinking along the lines of maybe a few little bits of touch up effect on, on these which I've seen that on quite a few photographs of of the actual active combat era but you've got to be careful with this because uh, there are a lot of photographs of Foxy Killer and almost none of them are while she was actually out in the Gulf <laughs> they're all taken at air shows after the fact so the, the, the finish isn't necessarily completely representative and here we have the bombs on their central pylons um, so these were painted in multiple shades of green this was all based on one photograph that I have which shows a couple of these bombs being prepped with fox killer in the background which is nice and they show that glossy finish on the central part so the central part is a standard £1,000 bomb um, and then it's had a kit fitted to it which has added all this gubbins that makes it guided so yeah the glossy central part and the colours or the representations of the colours are from that photograph and then I've added some dust effects on that gloss area to match what I see in the pictures and just a little bit of wash to outline the detail basically on these and then again I've fitted the cover at the front there There's uh, the brassing gives you two two types of nose piece for these bombs there's one with the cover fitted which is this type and the one without the cover fitted so if your aircraft's parked you really need to have it with the cover on and vice versa and here's the other one basically the same slight differences in the amount of dust and its representation but they're all kept in the same place so they're going to look broadly similar so for the rest of this video I'm going to look at wash washing the kind that makes you dirty rather than the kind that makes you clean um, opinion warning coming up there will be a lot of opinion stated over the next several minutes these opinions are all mine I'm not expecting you to agree with everything I say as I've said many times on this channel I'm not here to tell you how to do anything I'm simply here to talk to you about the way I do things some of you may agree some of you may not um, unfortunately it seems that weathering and the application thereof are is somewhat subjective and it, it shouldn't be to be honest because weathering is weathering and you know but anyway I'm going to show you the way I work at this this model is partly done and partly not so I can go through a, some of the stages quite easily so as you know we've got Tamiya acrylic on this and it has been overcoated with X22 the X22 is thinned with Mr. Colour Thinner which makes it a much nicer clear to use than it would otherwise be that has had plenty of time to dry and that is somewhat important to be honest uh, if you try and go at this stuff without 
thoroughly dry paint you, you can end up with stains that you can't remove and you'll end up repainting things and doing touch-ups now these aircraft were very dirty it was an operational uh, phase uh, in a dirty place uh, very harsh conditions that the aircraft were being used in and the paint that they had put on them was very very matte so it you know everything will stick to that so along with all the chipping that you're getting because it's a semi-permanent finish you're also going to get all the dirt because all of those scuffs and marks that would normally not really show up on a kind of a decent satin finish which is what these were beforehand will just show and all the oil stains and the drips and the leaks and the spills will be visible and then they'll soak up yet more dirt so it all adds up to quite a grungy looking aircraft it's in a very short space of time actually you don't need months and months of work for these things to get dirty airplanes like being dirty so what I'm using what I mostly use for doing washes nowadays is oil brushes I do have MIG panel line washes and, and filters but as they uh, become useless which they won't to do I'm just throwing them away and I'm not replacing them and what I'm using now is oil brushes and enamel thinners and I simply make up the wash as I go in the colour that I choose to use uh, the predominant hues being used on this model thus far are these two this is Starship Base Sludge and Starship Filth actually it says Startship Filth which is quite amusing that one oops um, as you can see from the bottom the basically this one is kind of a, a greenish fairly dark brown and this one is a more of a greyish brown um, I'm, I'm going to use this one right now you don't have to use oil brushes obviously if you already own anything like this Ab Tylings, Winter and Newton, anything else if you already own actual oil paints in oil paint tubes then by all means use them it's exactly the same process I don't have that many of those so Apparently this brush is good enough to apply it direct to the model. Um, nice try Meg, but I, I don't think so. Stick some in a palette. And then get some enamel thinners. This is an ancient and uh, Humbrol enamel thinners tin, but there's actually several different types of enamel thinners in it now because I just keep topping it up. And I buy whatever is on offer some in my pipette I'm going to drop it in there with the oil paint just mix it up now the, the viscosity of this is not terrifically important you can vary it depending on what you're doing or how deep or dark you want the effects to be doesn't really matter if it's really really thin you might find you're going to need to use it a couple of coats to get the effect you want if it's really really thick you might spe find you spend an awful lot of time cleaning it up there's a balance um, I don't know what the ratios are but you can see it's essentially around about the same thickness as, as something you'd stick through your airbrush actually uh, this is just a cheap old paintbrush that I use for all sorts of cheap old things the paintbrush that you apply the wash with is not terribly important and I'm going to put the wash in the panel lines on this upper wing come in a touch with the zoomer there we go now application you could if you were some kind of masochist just paint the whole surface with the wash and then proceed to spend the next several hours fighting to get it all off again don't really see the point in that approach unless you want a general smuttiness on your finish I do to an extent but I like to be quite in control of said smuttiness so I'm going to apply it a little bit more subtly and I'm, I am literally going to just paint the lines if your wash is just right and if your panel lines are just right you might find the capillary action alone will do most of the work for you which is great am I even on camera? no 
Good work, Jen. There you go. That's capillary there. I'm just touching it and you just end up with some dots that you need to clean up. So, again, there's a balance. You could spend ages putting it on to save a little bit of time taking it off or vice versa. Up to you. Now, you need to let this dry. It doesn't want to be rock hard dry, three days dry. But you need the bulk of this thinner to evaporate off before we go any further. There, leave it at that for the moment. Okay, once that's dry then, here's what we're looking for. I'll get you get you to focus please camera. Now you can see hopefully close up that the wetness has gone out of that. It is now dry. It's not fully dry, it's not cured, not fully adhered. If you were to wipe it with your finger like so, it's, it will quite readily come off at this point, but the, the wetness has gone out of it, and that's the stage we, that it needs to be at for this next process. I'm trying to get this so that it's where, there we go. So now we need to put some some of this enamel thinners straight in the in the palette there so you've got clean thinners and you need to select a suitable paintbrush you need a brush it doesn't need to be a small or very fine brush but it needs to be a brush that will hold a point that's the only important part about this and you need to moisten it with the thinners it doesn't want to be soaking soaking wet just wants some thinners in it so tap it off on your tissue just to take the excess out of it and I'm going to move this now so it's not necessarily in shot but I need it out of the way of my hand and once you've got your moist brush you're going to just use the sort of side of the brush we're not painting we're using the brush at an angle maybe about a 30 degree angle to the surface and just blend slash remove the excess wash like that Now if your brush is not too wet, if you're gentle and if your panel lines are suitable, you can just go across the whole thing and it will stay in there. But the beauty of this is, as opposed to just wiping it off with a cotton bud or a cloth, for one thing the wash will stay inside that line, you're not going to wipe it out of the panel line, which is something that I really, I don't like to see. If you're going to uh, accent panel lines, then you want all of the panel line to be accented I hate to see this kind of dotted line effect that you get where your wash is separated or it's it's just been removed with a with a rag and some of it's been pulled out some of it stayed in I don't like that effect it doesn't look realistic it actually detracts from everything rather than adding to it in my opinion there's that opinion warning again this does take a lot longer no two ways about it but one of the other benefits of doing this is because you're actively blending the wash as well as removing it you can create some really nice kind of staining effects that can get built up around these panel lines which actually can end up looking a lot like pre-shading believe it or not but you have a lot more control over how much of it you're going to see than you do with pre-shading because you're not also fighting with coverage and colour saturation and everything else it's difficult for me to, as usual, see what I'm doing and also allow you to see what is going on but I'm going to flip this around See if I can get away with pulling that in a bit tighter. Centralise everything in the frame. Let's try it there. So you can see you've got that little bit of excess along the back there. I'm just using the point of this brush. Blending that excess away. Keep the brush clean. And keep using the tissue at the side to re remove the excess thinner and 
and another benefit of doing this is if you have some of those panel lines that are a little bit indistinct that you can't get washed to stay in we all know the ones you can almost create your own panel lines doing this which I'll show you in a second because you're using the brush with the good point it's going to gather the excess wash and you can just draw it along and almost just push it into the panel line I hope you can see how that's happening there and when you get to the end and you want to do the uh, obligatory leaking circle effect you can just actually just drag it away like this might not look like much but it's just going to start developing some lovely subtle streaking effects and of course they can be built upon layer by layer by layer as you go along now let me find an area where I can make a panel line happen I'll just show you on these riveted areas so essentially we come at it from one side you see how that's made a line turn it around or turn your arm around whichever is easiest <laughs> come at it from the other way and your brush is collecting that wash and it's moving it along and hey presto a panel line so if your panel lines are a bit weak and you didn't rescribe them or the paints filled them in a little bit by using this method you can still get the wash to do exactly what you want it to do everywhere you want it to be and everywhere you don't want it to be equally there you go there is no panel line there i just made it so if i get a clean cotton bud i can literally just that's gone now no more panel line so you see how this method acts to give you some really beautiful clean crisp panel accents which is what I want in this case because these aircraft because of the aforementioned matte finish and dirty environment and operational tempo pretty much all the panel lines are visible and dirty on the real thing so that's the way I do this and as you can see just from that short demonstration it is not a fast process it does take time uh, but the results are without any doubt at all superior and much more controllable actually than simply wiping it away now there is another new method that I've just kind of come across I do follow the ammo channel on YouTube uh, and something they've come out with is these sponge things now this isn't an ammo one I I, <laughs> I went to my local supermarket and I bought a makeup sponge that is what this is uh, got a whole packet of these there's about 10 of them in there for a fiver and it's a very soft flexible sort of foam stuff and you can use this to remove wash and it works really well it kind of just grabs it off without pulling it out of the lines you see how much quicker it is and in, and in the case of this model, because of the general griminess and staininess that I want, it tends to leave a little bit of a stain, which, which in this case is fine. But even just that quick thing, if I, again, if I again bring this up closer for you, can you see how they're not, those panel lines, those, those removable panel gaps, it's not smoothly highlighted, it's kind of got a bit of that dotted line effect I was talking about, whereas the one I just did with the paintbrush really doesn't. So I don't tend to use the sort of mass wipe off methods very much for those reasons. So once this is done, this is done directly onto that X22 gloss coated surface. It's not a full gloss as you can see, it's a nice satin uh, and it was in fact lightly rubbed down with the Trizac before I started just to make sure it's absolutely smooth. Uh, the next stage and when that's finished in fact this is the effect that you're going to have this wings here's one I did earlier that is the built-in paint effects plus the wash done in the method I've just shown you only at that stage from there 
I use a, a flat or a satin varnish, you know, I'm, I'm using the VMS now, satin. That gets overcoated with satin varnish. And because this aeroplane needs to be so dirty, we then go back in with the wash and on the belly I've been working on that. So this is now a flat finish as you can see. And the difference with using the very same wash mixture on a satin surface is it's, it kind of soaks in and it kind of grabs. Still blended away in the same way using the, the brushes and the enamel thinner, but now you can deliberately allow a lot of staining to be left behind as you can see here and this is the second round of wash so it had the initial wash as I've just done on the top satin coated and then I've gone in again with the same colour but this time left quite a lot of smut smears and stains behind not, not just left it in the panel lines And again, that will be repeated across the dirtier areas. I mean, every area isn't going to be as dirty as this area, but. And again, from here, I'll, I'll very lightly flat coat it again and uh, then use the dirt spray mixture, which is a 50 50 mixture of black and XF64 red brown Tamiya acrylic and a lot of thinners and kind of spray that. And then from there, go in and be doing the streaking for all of the multitude of uh, engine and hydraulic oil and fuel leaks that you get along the bottom of these things. Um, but that's the process in a nutshell. So far I've done each side, the belly and one wing basically and there's probably eight to ten hours of work in it. So it, it isn't a fast process but I, I feel that the, the results justify uh, the means. It, it's, it's so much more controllable and the effects can be so much more subtle uh, and very directed so it can be exactly what you need it to be rather than just a a wash a panel line wash you know uh, color selection you're going to base that on a the type of weathering you're trying to represent and b the color that you're putting it on and that is there for the purposes it's not authenticity per se because dirt Dirt is the colour of dirt no matter what colour of the paint it's on, right? But on a real aircraft, the panel lines, often they fret a little bit and you get a little bit of a aluminium powder working up and that it is pure black. You rub your finger across it, you look at that and it's a pure black essence of aircraft that's coming out of those panel lines. But if you did that onto a model, no matter what colour, it would look ridiculous. It would be too much tonal difference there and it just wouldn't look right, even though technically it is. So for it to appear correct, you, you need to take those kind of tonal values into account a little bit more and, that, and that's why we have all the different colours of oil brusher. And the final sort of end result effect that, that I'm working towards doing all this, I've done the top of the tail plane here. Excuse the sniffs. Uh, and we end up with something like this. It's just wash, nothing else. Just apply it in multiple layers, bit by bit. to give the effect of, of just the filth and the, and the way the ground crew have been walking on it and what have you. Um, one way to achieve a, a lot of these kind of sort of almost speckly effects is to just use a, a cotton bud and roll it and it kind of spreads the wash around and leaves it a little bit random where a paintbrush it always looks like a paintbrush has been in effect and then um, <coughs> actual speckle effects a la Uncle Night Shift he clearly wasn't the one that invented the process but he's made it very well known you wash and sprinkle it on with a paintbrush like so uh, yeah and this is the sort of the final effect that i'm working towards across much of the upper surface actually and the belly will be similar but more sort of streaky and oily and leaky than just walked on and dirty so that's where i'm heading with that so that's going to be that for this episode Hopefully that was somewhat useful, although a little bit short. I mean, you could go on about wash and its application forever. There's so many different ways to put wash on and take it off. But I think it's useful to look at the process of applying a wash in a little bit more of a um, 
stylistic way rather than thinking I'm just highlighting panel lines look at it as a step towards the finished product weathering wise use it to apply shading and tonal variation as well as just just highlighting the panel lines because you can uh, next episode so this was part eight amazingly this is already a part eight eight part series I think there'll be one more which will probably cover sort of finishing off of the weathering and some of the smaller parts pop uh, how I've gone about working on those and then there'll be a final reveal so that'll end up a nice neat 10 pieces of foxy killer project so anyhow I hope this was useful hope you enjoyed it um, so until next time look after yourselves look after each other and Genesis out